So I've got an email for you guys. Have you got an email? Ooh. Yes. An email. This one is from Elizabeth, and the subject line is a wee thank you. Oh, Scotland. Mm. Yeah, well, maybe. Hello, Sci Guys. I hope you're all doing well. <laughs> Hello, Sci Guys. I hope you're all doing well. I thought I'd email you to let you know that your podcast is amazing. Aw, lovely. That's so wholesome. My dad suggested that I listen to a podcast on the way to school. Yours arrived just in time. Good dad. Yeah, good dad. Good Solid job, dad. dad. Thanks for the interesting and odd science stories and the lighthearted humor to help jumpstart my morning. I partially love Luke spoiling the hashtag content before it's meant to arrive. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that for a few weeks. Yeah, so no, get better at that. No, you do not need to get oh, better actually, at that. I did that. it this week because I pointed out, well, when you'll see the episode, pointed out that you did this whole thing from a Twitter meme. So, yeah, you did really pretty well you, this week. You really did. Uh, so thank you for making my weekday mornings bearable on the way to school. Hope you have a good day. Elizabeth. P.S. Thanks, Corey, for taking photos with my friend Oscar despite his shyness. Cute. Cool. Good. Well, thanks, enjoy Elizabeth. your walk today, Elizabeth. And enjoy this episode. <laughs> Start the show. Hello and welcome to Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey and as always I'm joined by my co-hosts Jamp and Luke Cutper. Hello. Good day. Welcome back. This week, we're getting deep and going to some dark places. Oh, some my dark favorite. Places. Ooh. Where? So we've climbed Mount Everest, we've been to the moon, and we've even sent robots to Mars. Have but, we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we haven't. Have. Well, not us three in not particular. Not us three individually. No. no. Well, I have. Anyway. Okay. The most abundant thing on the surface of Earth is water, but we've not really been, not really been there, have we? This week, we're talking about the real final frontier, deep sea exploration, and why you should be terrified of the ocean. We've not been to water. Not to the bottom of the ocean. Oh, the bottom of the ocean. Corey, (laughs) can I just ask, this week on Twitter, I saw like this video where it just kept going lower and lower. Is that why you've chosen this? (laughs) It was just like a video that was like, how deep is the ocean? And it just kept going down. I was in the bath when I saw that. Uh, I was really scared. (laughs) (laughs) How deep is my bath? So if you're ever wondering why some of the Psy Guys topics get picked and like some really important scientific reason, it's probably not. Maybe Corey's probably seen a meme. Maybe it's because Corey's in the bath. <laughs> it was really scary because my bath's not very deep, but the ocean is really deep. Um, it is kind of annoying when you say we haven't been to the bottom of the ocean because that animation shows that we actually went like within like 50 meters and then just stopped. It's because we, it's difficult to get down there. Didn't James been, Cameron been, go down there? Yeah, James Cameron's been down there. Not quite. There is one pers- one one expedition went lower than James Cameron. Oh. Two. I thought you were uh, going to okay. say yeah. James Cameron got 50 meters to, to, from the bottom and went, nah. Fuck yeah, it. no, that, that's the other <laughs> expedition <laughs> did. The other expedition really? did. It w- literally was like 50 meters away from the bottom and they were like, turned around and went back up. Why? There's reasons. For, well, there. I'm sure we will find out, James. Don't okay. worry. Maybe that's I mean, I'll it, tell you now. Maybe that's because, what the episode's about. It's because their ship was cracking. Oh, oh yeah that's, that's a good pressure. reason pressure because the bottom of the ocean is very heavy yeah basically yeah well the ocean is very heavy the the ocean, ocean, yeah. well a lot of water is very heavy to be fair that's very true even a little bit of water is very even heavy. a little bit of water you ever tried to pick up water it's very difficult yeah it just slips right through your fingers do you know a liter of water is a kilogram thanks yeah. thanks like year the, three science the James. metric system is so great the metric <laughs> system is great i love it you know every 10 meters you go down is another atmosphere i worth bet the pressure i bet oh, yeah, i did know that someone out there who yeah. heard that a, a liter of water is one kilogram and went that's such a weird coincidence wow. <laughs> as if we didn't like do that on purpose it's like it was designed that way <laughs> so oceans cover 70 percent of the earth's surface but even today we've not really explored them very much uh we've explored maybe three percent we've explored more really? of the ocean more of like, like mars than we have of the ocean oh yeah we yeah. we've got like perfect maps of mars what about more mars or less. oceans oh, oh mars doesn't have oceans it had oceans. Had maybe. oceans. Has ice. Yeah, it does. There we go. Yeah, but we we know more about the moon and Mars than we do about the bottom of the ocean. To be fair, I was acting shocked. Like oh, only three percent, but I thought it was like five percent. So it's not that much of a difference. I guess. Yeah, but ninety. So like ninety to ninety-five. But it's still not a lot. No, like ninety to ninety-five percent of it is a complete mystery. We don't know what's going um, on there at all. Brilliant. Probably just more water though. I mean, probably quite a bit of water. Yeah. What if there's what, you expect. what if there's really big sharks? They're actually quite small sharks. There's a shark that could fit in the palm of your hand. That's not scary. What if they were, like, I'm talking the Meg, like Jason Statham level. Threat. There could be, but it'd be difficult to have that, to think about it. There's not much down there, so the amount you'd have to eat and be that big. All I'm asking is, is it possible? 
I mean, yes. technically, yes. That's good enough for me. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know how space, there's a different definition of space between the US military and everyone else. Right. Oh, we, yes. Yes, I yeah. do, actually. So space is a different thing. You also know this. <laughs> yeah, I do know this. Sure. You also know this. <laughs> I just because I was saying yeah I, it's like that because I wouldn't have been able America, to tell you what it was. Yeah, for America, it doesn't space really, is 20, yeah. kilo, 20 kilometers. I don't know the exact difference. The point is that deep sea is the you same used thing. to. <laughs> it was You've on a piece of paper. And, it was on a thing in front of me. No, so the deep sea is different. Is the same in that there's different definitions. Right. So fishermen say that the deep sea is any part of the ocean beyond the continental shelf, which is mm. just like the edge of the land. So yeah. as soon as it drops off, they're like that's deep sea. Yeah. Whereas uh, scientists, the deep sea is the lowest part of the ocean, which is about uh, deeper than 1,800 meters, which is beyond where light can reach. So for scientists, oh, deep scary. sea is like 1,800 meters. And for fishermen, mm. it's, it's pretty shallow. Technically, that's light scary. can reach all the way to the bottom. It would just get exponentially less bright. Do you, do you enjoy saying something drop like off, that? It wouldn't drop off to zero. Do you like saying, well, do you like saying that? Do you like being smart, Luke? No, I well, just mean technically. that there's no such thing as like, it can't reach there because it well, would just get less and less bright. I mean, eventually, it, okay, I suppose if one photon was left and then that one photon was like not able to get further, then, but that's not after 1,800 yeah, okay. meters. After 1,800 meters, it's dark. Really dark, <laughs> okay? Because you can't see any sunlight. <laughs> it's dark. Scientific <laughs> definition, it's really it's dark. It's scientifically really freaking dark, okay? <laughs> Almost undetectable to the human eye. Exactly. So I'll... <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. So I'll tell you how deep the ocean is. Uh, just different different depths to give you an idea. How deep can uh, scuba divers dive? Do you know? Scuba divers. Scuba divers. Well, I can dive. I think it's 20 meters. But others, not very good. other scuba divers. Well, I only have the first <laughs> level of scuba diver. I would imagine like probably 500 meters. As a guess. Oh, no. Right. Not... Okay. 500 meters is how deep blue whales dive. Yeah, so that's say, not happening. No. Definitely not that far. It's 40, 40 meters. What? Only? Yeah. 40. Hang on. But those. Hold on a minute. Uh, my watch as a kid was waterproof up to 50 meters. So, like, <laughs> what's the point if scuba divers don't go deeper than that? What's going down with my. So what, if you blue whales going to wear my watch and go down 50 meters? What? Yeah. They need to know what time it is, don't they? Is your watch more advanced at diving than. Every scuba diver. All that means is that it can withstand the pressure. No, I know, but I just, I'm just wondering why they... Even... And it also sinks. <laughs> they make it sink specifically to prove it. it. Yeah. The Burj Khalifa, if you were to submerge it, would still not even reach nearly the bottom. That's 830 meters tall, and it's the biggest building we've ever made. That's Ooh. pretty pathetic of us, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, not even 10% of how wow. deep the ocean is. You could fit more than 10 Burj Khalifas into the deepest part really? of the ocean and still not hit the surface. Yeah, and then so I, I thought roughly I when I was like watching that. this animation that has prompted this entire episode of Sci Guys <laughs> was the deepest of the ocean is about 30,000 feet, which mm -hmm. is about what our planes fly at. Yeah. So no. like where are jumbo jet? If you go to America and you fly in the sky, you're going as high as the deepest point of the sea. Yeah. So uh, cruising altitude is about... Is about how deep the oceans get. Yeah. No, I don't like that. Yeah, it's not nice. It's really high. Yeah. But in the so, ocean, it's really And there low. could be anything down there, man. Like, there's this really interesting TED talk I watched recently, which is a theory that we are descended from water apes because of the shape of our nose. If you think about our nose with our nostrils pointing down, it's perfectly adapted for swimming forwards under water without water going up your nose. Whereas if That's you had true. like a flat nostril, you'd constantly be getting water up your nose. And so, like, we have no idea that there's not just, like, a branch off from us that's mm. living, like, super low down, that adapted to live in, like, really <gasps> low conditions at no. the bottom of the earth, at the bottom of the ocean. We have no idea. That's entirely possible. That it bothers me that we don't know anything. Like, I can't dispute 3%. anything. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. We know more about the planets in our solar system than we know about we know the bottom of the ocean. That's, yeah. why I, that's why I did this, because this terrifies me, but it also really annoys me. It's one of these things. I really it's appreciate this episode, actually, Corey, because I love giving examples of, like, how little we do know. Mm, yeah. And so this is great. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, and this is really close to home. <laughs> Tell me more about what we don't know. <laughs> I mean, this is really close to home as well. It's not like, oh, it's the moon. It's hard to get to. It's just there. You can drop a rock and it'll probably get there. You could just tie like a brick to your feet and then go all the way to the bottom. I mean, you'd be dead. You'd be dead because you'd quickly. collapse. You would go to the bottom. You, you probably wouldn't collapse necessarily. Really? Well, mm, at the bottom, maybe. But realistically. Your lungs, maybe. Collapse like, yeah, you're... As in you'd get crushed by the weight of the sea, would you not? Mm, maybe not, your lungs and stuff. But uh, mm. 
Interesting. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a weird one because if you think about it, people think that you explode when you go to space. Mm. You don't though. Oh, really? You know, it's just a lot of pressure. You, you boil. Just, yeah. yeah, you do boil, which yeah. is much. That's not exploding though. Much worse. <laughs> <laughs> and freeze at the same oh, time. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather explode than boil to death. Yeah, exploding's quick, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's true. And cool. That's true. Well, when you're in space, it definitely yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that episode <laughs> really, of Rick and yeah, Morty. There's an episode of Rick and Morty in which behind. They, uh, r- they, they shrink Rick. So they shrink Morty inside a person. Mm, yeah. And then they need to get Morty back out at normal size. Oh, yeah. But the shrink explodes the, the person. Thing, the thing to make him bigger stops working. So they make the entire body bigger so that Morty who was small enough to fit inside a person, yeah. is normal size, which means the th- person he was in is now... Is now a giant The size of the United States. Over oh, the United States. I remember that. <laughs> a good episode. Yeah, do you know why you can't... There's like a limit to how big people can get. Because of um, gravitational on the spine. Yeah, essentially your bones... So there's this thing called the square cube law. So yes. the strength of your bones is to do with the area. Yeah. Whereas okay. your mass is to do with your volume. Yeah, if you yeah, increase yeah, yeah. area, you go up four times in volume. Double yeah. the area... Yeah, so you, yeah, so the volume increases more than the area, so then it gets to a point where you, your bones just aren't strong enough and oh, they crumble. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And that's why you don't have giant that's... insects. Uh, no, you don't have giant... In... Well... They get quite... No, you don't know. You don't have giant insects because there's not enough oxygen. They get quite so, big. Yeah, so the thing with insects is... This is really cool. Big enough uh, to scare back, Way back when... Uh, thousands and thousands of millions of years ago, even, there were giant insects. Oh my because God, there, there were giant a... centipedes, man. Yeah, like... because there was more oxygen. Ooh, yeah. Right. So, essentially, insects don't breathe with lungs. They've got like these tiny little holes going in them. Um, and if there's a, not enough oxygen, it can't yeah. penetrate to deep inside of them. So if you've got a higher concentration of oxygen, you can have bigger insects. Yeah. And I re- I remember, let's never have more oxygen. Please. I remember watching <laughs> I remember watching a documentary about uh, a giant snake that used to exist called the Titanoboa, I think it was called. And then just in the middle of the documentary, they dropped in. They were like, oh, yeah. And by the way, there were giant centipedes in this time frame as well. And I was like, that's way cooler and way scarier. Than, I like when things are bigger. Big, than a big snake. We, we've seen Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Like, yeah. give me big insects. I like when things were bigger, like giant sloths. Yeah. They were good. Like unnecessarily big. Yeah, like dinosaurs, just big for no reason. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Shall we get back to... <laughs> Let's get back to the depth well, of the ocean. We'll talk about dinosaurs for a bit more, but... Um... Yeah, so one, kilo- uh, one kilometer is sunlight that doesn't really penetrate much past there. Um, it gets very dark, like nighttime. Uh, one and a half kilometers is... Do you remember the BP oil spill? I do remember yes. the BP oil spill. So the Deepwater Challenger, which is the whole reason for the spill, mm. that's where that is. What, it's 1.5 kilometers under the water? Yeah, roughly. Ah. Yeah, supposedly. Oh. It was about one, one and a half kilometers under the water. The deepest part of the Grand Canyon is 1.83 kilometers. So that's... you can, like that The deepest deep. part of the, de- the Grand Canyon isn't as deep, even nearly as deep as the deepest parts of the ocean. Yeah. Scary. Ooh. Yeah, scary yeah, stuff. You. And the Grand Canyon is huge. Have you ever seen a picture of someone next to it or seen it yourself? I've not seen it myself, I've not seen unfortunately. It myself, no. Not yet. You've seen it, I you want s- to. Look at pictures. It's obscene. It's too big. It's intense, but also like you can't fully appreciate it in a picture. Mm. You, have, you have to go there, I think. The Titanic? I don't know. I've not been there. Yeah, I was the like, Titanic. you're not being <laughs> James. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you have to go there, otherwise you, you can't have, appreciate it. Is, so the man who has not been there, so have, therefore has not appreciated it's like, it. It's like anything else, though. You have to go there. <laughs> Uh, the Titanic. The Titanic. Yeah, yeah, that sank. Do you remember that? That did. Yeah. It did sink, I think. Yeah. So that's down there, 3.8 kilometers. That's not bad. That's oh. not too bad, is it? No. You can visit that pretty easily, actually. No, that's actually. hell deep. Well, that's not, that, that's not that deep compared to what we're talking about next. Th- that's nearly four kilometers. Well, it's, oh, what, it's not as deep next? as the av- average depth of the ocean, which is 4.27 kilometers. That's just the average. So it's basically at the average. And then the height of Mount Everest. So you could put, the Man- you could put Mount Everest I was, underwater. Actually, I was going to ask this earlier. I was like, how many Everests could you fit? 1.3? No, more than that. Well, the height of Everest is 8.85 kilometers. Yeah. And, oh, right. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. So it's just over 10,000 meters, isn't it? Yeah, and Mariana Trench, uh, Challenge Deep is the deepest point of the ocean that we know about. And that is... Challenge Deep. Yeah. 11,034 right. kilometers. Meters. Oh, sorry. 11,000 11, kilometers. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, <laughs> my God. It goes Bigger all, than the Earth. It goes all the way through the Earth. <laughs> Uh, it's 11,034 meters <laughs> Right <laughs> Freudian slip Awful Freudian slip It's because of the way I've written it It's silly Yes, yeah, so that's really deep it's Was that deep, deep enough for you? Yeah, what's the deepest thing we've ever found In that's... terms of creatures? Oh, I've got that later on Sorry, later, don't, again. Spoil, no don't spoil the story I'm going to talk about people now Okay People, okay So uh, we've had three people Well, four people Three journeys Go down to Challenger Deep uh, that's Don Walsh and Jacques, Jacques. 
a Pol- man named Polish. someone Jacques. Jacques. someone Jacques. Picard, French Picard, Jacques, Jacques Picard. Picard. Yes, they went down in 1960. Uh, they got to about just under 11 uh, 11 kilometers. Uh, they were the first people to do it, and no one has actually gotten deeper than them. That's since they did it in 1960. Quite a long yeah, way. that really surprised me when I saw that animation. Was it was like James Cameron in the 2000s went nearly like about 10 kilometers, mm. but the ones that did it first went even deeper than him. It's like he had millions and millions of his pounds of his own money. Mm. And he wasn't as good as these guys who did it in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. But this, yeah. so Don Walsh is still alive. He went down when he was 27. What did he see down there, though? Probably nothing. It was too dark. Not much. They, they didn't do much many scientific studies. It just kind of went down and were like, cool. I think they, <laughs> I think they saw some, uh, they might have seen some like life on the way down. But at the bottom, they didn't really see much. It's kind of I mad guess. to it's... see stuff down there because you, you, like, I think we don't appreciate how there's just no energy. Like, unless you get right to the bottom and there's some kind of geothermal vent giving mm-hmm. off energy from the Earth's core or from the magma, mm-hmm. there's no light. So there's no photosynthesis going on. There might not be many other creatures, so you can't eat anything. Exactly. Like, you're gonna have to find some really cool way of of making energy. It's not. Yeah, it's not even like space. Where I mean, at least in space, you've got the sun. The sun. Some kind of light. Like, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. It's great. Solar energy. A load of energy in it. But um, no, there's nothing going on down there. Nothing. We'll that talk we about that. Of. That we know of. Yeah, not yeah. That we know, not nothing that we know of. Uh, but every so every single time someone has gone down, they've been a first in some way. The first two guys were the first to go down there, and they were the deepest. James Cameron went in 2012, and he was the first to go by himself, which is Ooh. terrifying. I didn't know that. I thought he went with people. No, he went by himself. He went by. Imagine, imagine being. At the how bottom he, of the ocean, how did he swim 10 that? kilometers away from, almost 11 kilometers away from any other human being, but having like 10 kilometers that's of water terrifying. in between you and everything else on the planet. Pretty cool. It's pretty horrifying. That's, it's got to be really quiet in that's there. That's a hundred times more terrifying than just going down there with someone mm. by yourself. Supposedly, he sat and ate a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> You're joking. Which is the deepest Freshly caught. tuna has ever gone. <laughs> 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 well, not alive tuna, we assume. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Just to beat that, I'm going to go over the Mariana Trench. Is it Mariana Trench? Mariana, yeah. I want to drop some tuna attached to something really heavy. <laughs> just so it's the lowest tuna has ever gone. Why? Just because then I'll have a world record. Well, the tuna will have a world record. You'll just be some guy that dropped it. <laughs> you, got, you got tuna to the deepest. You that's like the actual saying, tuna. That's like true of anything, surely. <laughs> And a few days ago, this is really lucky. So uh, I was tweeting earlier saying that it was quite lucky because today I found out that this is quite I did topical. S- I did see your tweet and I was wondering like, yeah. what, what is it? So I did, I did see a video. That, I, thought, I thought it was going to be an episode about tripophobia because of the... Oh, iPhone. the Apple thing. Yeah, the, the fear no. of little holes. Yeah. This guy named Victor Viscovo became the fourth person to reach the bottom of the ocean just a few days ago. Wait, what do you mean by the bottom of the ocean? Because no one's reached the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, but, you know, as close as we get to the bottom of the ocean. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've stood on the bottom of the ocean, if you count the shoreline on a beach. Shut up. That that would be the top of the ocean. No, but... No, shut up. No, it's the bottom. No, shut up. (laughs) Um, And, yeah, so a few days ago, news broke of that. It's not... It wasn't very long ago. Um, And the interesting thing about this is that his ship is reusable. Everyone else is kind of... Ah, like Elon Musk. Yeah. Oh, very he's, fun. He is like a cool Elon Musk. Recycling. As an Elon Musk, but Elon not... Elon Musk is very cool. Elon Shut Musk, up. but he doesn't <laughs> sound like a supervillain. He hosted a PewDiePie video at one time. Elon Musk is a supervillain. He's not is, a supervillain. No, he's not. He's selling flamethrowers. That's yeah, but for fun. Okay, he's like in you it. Might have a point. <laughs> he's like, how is that not fun. super villain activity? No, you don't understand. He's selling it for fun. Well, okay, name <laughs> me a super villain that sold the weapons that it uses. Uh, Syndrome. I don't know who that is. <laughs> the, Incredibles. <laughs> the Incredibles. The Incredibles. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I don't remember that he did that, but I'm sure he did. <laughs> that was his plan. <laughs> okay. It um, was an easy to miss detail. Panther. It was only the whole plot. <laughs> <laughs> He's Evil. a good boy. Evil. He's a good boy. Let's move on. Do you reckon because someone, sick sorry, of let's this. move on. He's a good Let's talk boy. about the good Elon Musk, Victor Viscovo, who has a really cool name, also like alliterative, which means Victor. he's a superhero. Victor Viscovo Victor sounds Viscovo. like a supervillain. Not to be like Russia racist, <laughs> but he does sound like, he, like, like he'd Captain be like America some kind of like Soviet era American <laughs> propaganda like super villain someone that Captain America properly punches yeah. in the face right? <laughs> take this Victor wait no why is Captain America Russian <laughs> take this Dr. Viscovo take this Dr. Viscovo Victor Viscovo Victor Viscovo has a project called Five Deeps 
Which <laughs> five? Five deeps. <laughs> How many deeps do I want to go? Five, five. deeps. Five deeps. <laughs> Sorry. Carry on. Why is it called five deeps? Because <laughs> it's going to five different points of the ocean that are really deep. Oh, five deeps. So there's you cannot use the term deep as a plural. Deeps. He's I, going to deeps. And that doesn't five work. Of them. Five deeps. <laughs> that does not work. It is a bit shorter than five deep points because, in the ocean. No, because there's Challengers Deep, which is the name of a place. But that's, that's, that's like me going, Five deeps. I'm going to make a YouTube channel where I go and review yummy food. And in every video, I review five foods that are nice, and I call it Five Yummies. That's fine. No, it's not. It's not okay. That's call perfectly fine. Want. Anyway, he's going to five different oceans and going to the deepest point of each of them. But like five deeps. Oh. You mean? Like as if he was going to five deeps. Yes, there's five different deeps he's in going short, to. Yes. <laughs> now, the cool thing about this, like I said, is that his ship is reusable. It can submerge and then come back up and resubmerge without breaking. And the reason that the other guys had to leave early, cut out early and go, go home, was because their, their ship started to crack because of the immense mm. pressure under the water. So he's got uh, uh, five deeps, like I said. <laughs> five deeps. I just um, hate it. I hate it so much. So five deeps. He's, but he's actually visit, visited uh, six places. And I'll tell you those oh, now. Oh, false advertising. Well, no, it's because one of them was the wreck of the Titanic, which isn't really a deep. So he's gone to Molloy Deep, uh, the Mariana Trench, which is Challenger's Deep, the Java Trench, South Sandwich Trench, uh, the Puerto Rico Trench, and that's the, that's all the trenches. And he also that's all the to, deeps. He also went to the wreck of the Titanic. The deeps. Which doesn't which, not which doesn't count as a deep. I no, think you'll find it's not a deep. It's just a Titanic. So it's five deeps and the Titanic, which is crazy. That like the Titanic Harry is just Potter sitting there. And, it's like the new version of Five Weddings and a Funeral. Harry Potter and Four the Five Deeps. <laughs> five <laughs> deeps and the Titanic. <laughs> so the ship that he's gone in is called the Limiting Factor, which is apparently a reference to some old sci-fi book because he's a nerd. Because obviously he's mm. a nerd because he's spending all of his money to go visit the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, Don Walsh is still alive, uh, and he was aboard the ship that the other ship dropped from when it first went down the mothership the mothership essentially <laughs> the mothership. so victor viscovo <laughs> went down in his uh one man little you know tin can down to the bottom mm, and yeah. the first guy to ever go down to the bottom of the ocean was there on the ship did he release him well, i mean i don't think he personally he released him button <laughs> <laughs> uh, he had only had uh praises for it he described the mission as a tour de force which is french maybe he misspelled tour de france <laughs> <laughs> the mission is a cycling race <laughs> Autocorrect <laughs> It's like riding a bike You never really forget <laughs> it <laughs> The limiting factor did uh, Five deep dives in the space of ten days Not the five different deeps Just five deep dives to the same place To the same deep So separate, same, separate from the five deeps Five deep dives in the same deep Five other deeps So hang on I say that five deep. times fast What if he does say so Does he do five visits to each deep And then he visits five deeps So there are 25 deeps I don't think he's limited to and five And the Titanic <laughs> <laughs> Five deeps in the Titanic 25 That's the deep deeps for, in yeah. the Titanic <laughs> he, he just visited Challenger's Deep five times Okay Yeah so on Vescova's first dive in the limiting factor, he spent four hours at the bottom, which is four hours at the deepest point that anyone's been to. Why was he staying there? He just wanted to have a look around. He don't want to just go. You would. That is, is, is no light. To, that is, is no quite light a long there. time. He brought his own lights, Luke. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> Like, got I'm going to go to the bottom looking? of the ocean and sit in the dark for four hours. He got the torch on his phone and he put it out the window. <laughs> what was he looking at? <laughs> There's no light down there. <laughs> oh, golly, I've made a mistake. <laughs> oh, I forgot to pack the bloody torches. Uh, it'd be worse if you just forgot the batteries. And on the fourth uh, trip... Do you it, know, sorry. Yeah. Do you know how how does it get back up? Like, how, what's the propulsion system? Uh, some of them, I know... that This was really difficult to find. Genuinely, yeah. I wanted to have this whole thing about how it worked and everything, but... That's a good question. The is information like is difficult to find. Maybe or um, like old ones used to just eject mass. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah sure. Uh, mass. Mass as in anything. As in they drop. They drop stuff and then they'd float back, float up. back up. Oh. Oh. Yeah, but oh. this one is reusable, so I doubt it does that. It probably is uh, something to do with fans, some kind of propulsion system. Yeah. But uh, I'm not not entirely sure. Sad. It's difficult to find. But then this is very new and it's non-commercial, so he doesn't probably want that being out to be there. Yeah. So the limiting factor, which is the name of the ship, as I've said, uh, its hull is made of grade 23 titanium, and the diameter inside is 59 inches, and the thickness of the hull 
which is, you know, the, like the walls of the boat is 3.5 inches or wow, nine centimeters. Thick. Mm. It's thick. That's thicker than like a plane, I think. Yeah, it's probably, probably that's is. really It's chunky. really thick. If you, if you think about it though, a plane doesn't even need to deal with a, pressure. Pressure, well, yeah. Planes need to deal with pressure. They need to deal with less than one atmosphere of pressure. But if this is down uh, 11, 11 kilometers and for every oh, 10 God, meters, you yeah. get an you get an extra atmosphere yeah that's 1000 atmospheres wow it's quite a few atmospheres to be honest yeah which is a lot more than a plane i mean actually the difference between us going from here into space is a thousand times less than the difference yeah, between going down to the bottom of the ocean zero atmospheres yeah so like going going deep in the ocean is a lot like going to space but just kind of flip a thousand times <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's much more it's terrifying and it's just a little bit flipped you know, all the problems you've got to do, there's similar problems you've got to deal with, mm. but they're just inverted. Mm. Yeah. Well, the only thing I wonder about that is that although it feels like we're going from, say, one atmosphere to zero atmospheres, that is essentially, when we go to space, that is essentially, I don't know if it works like this, but like I would imagine that because you're going to zero atmospheres, it's not like you're doing minus one. You're doing minus everything. It's going to infinitely to zero. undense infinite non-density which is like would the equivalent of that be if you were to keep going deeper and deeper in ocean then it would be infinitely dense it would be like having inf infinite inward pressure mm. is space like having infinite outward pressure or is actually the vacuum of space not particularly strong well to have infinite inward pressure you'd need to, to have it depends on what the pressure on the inside is so our bodies right. are are adjusted to dealing with one atmosphere of okay. pressure on the outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we give one atmosphere of pressure on the inside. Yeah. All of our organs yeah. are supposed to do that. Yeah. So when we go into space, our organs expand. If we go underwater, then they compress. So it is, it, it depends. You would die within about mm -hmm. a minute of going into space. Lovely. Although I, I don't know if you'd drown first or if you would just die from all your organs being crushed if you go underwater. What's the difference really? You're dead. Yeah, you're, you're dead. very. Yeah. You're, oh, you're so dead. We still haven't gotten to animals yet. Is it time to hear about the animals yet, Corey? It's one thing away from the animals. Yay. Luke. I'm sorry. Oh, there's so many things. I'm to going know to talk about, about decompression sickness. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The bends. The bends. The yeah. Bends. So a big reason that it's difficult for people to go down and essentially come back up is the bends, which is decompression sickness. Which mm. essentially uh, there's gases that dissolve in your blood. Nitrogen uh, specifically dissolves in your blood when you're going underwater with your little oxygen canister. And if you come back up too quickly, it essentially just comes out of your blood in bubbles and kills you. Oh. Well, not necessarily kills you, just makes you feel... Um, it you can know, kill you. It can kill you. It makes you dizzy, gives you a headache. Kind of like being drunk, essentially, but this with is, joint pain. This is even if you're inside a capsule? No, no. Okay. This is just if this is if you're there diving. Are, there are decompression chambers yeah. that, you can, that you use to like stabilize yourself before you go all the way back up. Exactly. Yeah. So you can't, you've got to be slow in coming back up because yeah. the pressure changes could just destroy destroy your body yes. completely it's not very nice um and if you want to treat it they put you in a in a chamber of 100 percent oxygen sometimes ah. i i heard that's really like fun like it's really like you kind of like you're drunk oh you get high yeah really you get high off of that's i mean that's part of the that's what people say that one of the reasons that that happens on planes do you know when the oxygen masks come down mm. supposedly uh it's not to help you breathe because you're basically you dead. Yeah, you're basically dead in the plane crash. It's just to make, to make you, you high. Out. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's yeah. pretty cool. Which, whether it's true or not, it it works. That's very considerate. I don't know if I'm comforted. Well, or... no, I think it's in case that it's in, if the oxygen supply fails. If the oxygen have supply oxy fails, yeah. yeah. But ultimately... It's not to get you high no, before you what die. I'm say, <laughs> what I'm saying is that ultimately, if a plane is crashing, you're dead anyway. So in effect, the yes. oxygen is only going to just get you high and chill you out. Yes, but if, if you're absolutely fine flying through the air but the oxygen supply fails yeah, then, then yeah. that's why it's there yeah th okay it's that's, not well, like... that is why it's there i misspoke what i mean is more <laughs> that, what i mean is more that if you're crash if the plane is crashing and the oxygen masks come down just get high before you die just get high i can almost guarantee you that that is not why I i'm not saying that's what it's for i'm just saying that's what will happen <laughs> The air hostess is now pointing out the nearest available <laughs> exit for you. In the event that we're going to die, heroin will drop down from the ceiling and you can inject it. You'll see the air hostess passing around the bong. Please, <laughs> please pass it to the left please, hand side. Please take a token and pass it on. <laughs> Guys, it's yeah. the moment you've all been waiting for. Is it the animals? Is it, oh my God, it's, it's the animals. The animals. Oh, Isn't it? Thank God we got there. 
So organisms in the deep sea are almost entirely reliant on sinking matter from above. Uh That's either living Mm -hmm. or dead because there's basically no food down there. Yeah. So that kind of that kind of stuff falls at a hundred meters per day. Wow. Oh wow. That's actually that's That's really slow. I mean, it's in water though. It's so it's sinking. It's sinking. In water. No, that's still incredibly slowly. That's like very slow. That's like what four meters an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's very slow. But it'll be because be- the water's so dense that the the upthrust is so great yeah. Yeah. compared to the gravity pulling it down. Yeah. They're probably like almost balanced, and the gravity has a tiny, tiny bit of edge. Exactly. So four meters an hour. You know how the th- you know how things float in water? Upthrust. Yeah. 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 Do you have, can you explain it? Um, it's because the pressure of the water, the weight of the water, is um. Pushing up. Would you no. like me to? <laughs> well, no, yeah, yeah. There's okay, so effectively there's um two different forces you want to think of. There's your weight, which is the downward force. Mm-hmm. And there's also the up thrust, the buoyancy force, which is just the pressure of the water pushing up on you. Yeah, trying to push up. Yeah. Now if it's more dense, if something is more dense, a liquid is more dense, it's gonna have more of an up thrust because it's got more pressure to push up on. So is that essentially right. because things are trying to or everything's trying to move to a state of lower density so the water particles at the bottom are trying to move away from a state of high density so they're trying to get upwards oh, it's I more see. a case of if something is more dense it hits off some it hits off stuff more yeah so I mean. there's more stuff to, so effectively what pressure is is just the tiny little right. atoms and particles bouncing yeah. off stuff uh, okay. so if something is more dense there's more of those little particles in one space so there's yeah. more of them to hit off you. Right. Yeah. So effectively, a way to make something float more is to either decrease its weight or increase the buoyancy force. So that's why things uh, sink very slowly. So the animals. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that make life down there hard. We've spoken about that. Pressure is one of them. To cope with the pressure, a lot of mm. animals are... Taking sm- heroin. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the worst way to deal with pressure, Luke. Are you taking heroin? No, I'm not taking heroin. <laughs> it's just because he said they deal with pressure. And I was like, i got to say something. And my brain went, take heroin. No, my brain didn't, <laughs> my brain didn't say take it. No. Okay, Ooh. just carry on. Stop, stop, stop letting me talk. Uh, you can donate to a fund to help Luke and his heroin problem <laughs> <laughs> by following the link in the description. You can donate to my Kickstarter to kickstart my heroin addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta so, start somewhere. <laughs> to cope with the excess pressure, uh, a lot of fish are smaller, and some of them just get rid of get rid of stuff inside them that could be crushed, like swim bladders. So there aren't any um, excess cavities. So we'd probably get our lungs would be smaller. Uh, we wouldn't have such a big chest cavity. Hmm. Our noses wouldn't be like they are. Mouths would be, you know what I mean? Like there's not yeah. excess space that you've got to like stop from being crushed in. Yeah. Mm. Uh, That's mainly the way to deal with pressure. Um, The biggest issue, probably, is the lack of resources. By which I mean, there's not really any food or sunlight down there. Yeah. Mm. So how life on the surface works, effectively, the most simplistic way to think of it is, sunlight comes down, plants make food from sunlight, animals eat plants, animals eat animals. That keeps on going on. It's a circle. It's the circle of life. They They do poop. And then they die. Plant eat poop, make more plant. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's a little circle, but sunlight is the... Sunlight is the outside thing mm. that comes in that makes all that possible. Sunlight that, gives everything. Exactly. So if you take out the sunlight, what happens? No life. But there's life at the bottom of the ocean. Geothermal Hell. vents. Yes. Yeah. Geothermal yeah. vents, in part. Uh, so there so there are um, kind of bacteria and other creatures mm. that uh, are at the bottom of the ocean next to geothermal vents that use that energy in order to make food. And other animals eat them and then eat them and eat them going up the food chain but what about places where there aren't geothermal vents because there are creatures living in places not near geothermal vents with no sunlight with no sunlight i feel like i've read about this but i can't remember what it is what this whole what this whole process is is chemosynthesis so that includes um being next to hydrothermal vents they're using chemosynthesis but at the oceanic crust like in thick layers of sediment there are there are creatures that actually uh, just... Is that to do with turning like, radiation into energy? Or... No, 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 no. no. It's the same as no. the, so the sun is, is radiation. They just... Yes. Um, so they basically react hydrogen with um, a rock that's found in sediment called uh, olivine. That's so weird. So it's yeah. actually just doing raw chemistry to get energy. Yeah, with seawater. So basically, they, they make hydrogen 
From the H2O. From the H2O and the olivine. Right. Yeah. And they also then have some o- oxygen there as well. That's probably quite helpful. Yeah, it probably is quite. But then also things can live without yeah, oxygen. We have a stuck down there. Which is, which is really interesting because it means that on other planets, uh, other bacteria could be living off of this process mm. with no oxygen. Um, there's also ooh, there's also a bunch of fish. Just like a ton of fish down there. Like Big a, fish or small fish? Ah, I'm glad you asked, because the next oh, no. thing I'm going to talk about is deep sea gigantism. Oh. I knew it! Big sharks! <laughs> okay, go on. Okay, so, for some reason, and the, I'm saying for some reason because we don't really know. This is, one of the, this is another one of the things that we just don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, down really deep, some animals just get real big. Things are real big. Like, real, like stupid big. So, do you guys know what wood lice are? Pill Ye- bugs, slaters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so they're the little kind of like roly-poly bugs. Yeah, yeah. Um... They're usually about how big would you say? About, like a centimeter. Uh, like a centimeter. A centimeter. A centimeter. That's a big one. That's a, a big, centimeter. A biggest. So down there, they're they're relative. Uh, we'll get to approximately between nineteen and thirty six centimeters and weighing <laughs> about one point seven kilograms. Oh, uh, scary! That's the biggest ones that you what, can find. But for like what reason? Just just because the only things that we, okay, so there's the That's only things really that we annoying. know why they're so big. Uh, and when I say no, we yeah. think we know are uh, giant, these kind of giant <laughs> worms. And we think they're so big just because there's a lot of resources and they don't need to move anywhere to get their food. So How they big put all their a giant worm? Right. Um, not very big. I don't have the exact length of it. It's like, it's big. <laughs> and that's the show. <laughs> Thanks for listening, think, guys. You I can check out. <laughs> think of a worm and then make it bigger. They're giant tube worms. Tube worms are usually tiny, uh, but their diameter... Uh, which is the width of their body is four centimeters. Ooh, that's the giant thick. ones. That's yeah. like a snake, and they can reach a length of two point four meters. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Awful. So how they how they survive is they you use said not that big. Two point four meters. That's a that's a snake. It's bigger than a person. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Except oh. I have a diameter more than four centimeters. It's true. Yeah. So how do they <laughs> fe- how do they feed? Um, they have bacteria in them that um make food from chemicals on near hydro, uh, hydrothermal vents. Ah, very so nice. they don't need to go anywhere to so get So they food. don't even eat anything. The bacteria, the bacteria, just, bacteria just do it. The bacteria do it and them. they just, yeah. They just chill. They just, yeah, chill. just chill out, which is why they're so big probably. They because probably they put have all a of their energy. life then, don't they? I mean, they do. I want to be reincarnated yeah, as a giant tube worm. Yeah. That's, that's great. an easy life. Awesome. It's basically Luke's life, except, you know, moving slightly <laughs> less. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, man. There's also the giant squid. Uh, like in Harry Potter? Yes, like in Harry Potter. Also yeah. like in the real world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except the real giant squids aren't like friends with students and also don't live in lakes in Scotland. <laughs> so no, not at all like in Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, so giant squids, they're pretty elusive. We don't really have many... Pictures of yeah, them. they're almost like mm. a myth, aren't they? They're like M- more or less, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, they were thought to be fake for ages until they actually found one. They found one quite they? recently as well. Yeah. So they're they're massive, though they can they can be meters and meters long. I think mm. uh, up to about thirty meters. What? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What? Giant. That's giant. Not, think of a think of the size squid, of a normal squid. Giant squid. A normal squid. If it's about a meter, you're like, that's yeah. big. That's a big. That's squid. That's a big squid. Yeah. Ooh, scary. Oh, sorry. Thirteen. Okay. That's 13, still big. Not thirteen. That's still quite. But still, big. that's big. Yeah. That's yeah. Big. Huge. Giant, even. Some may say. <laughs> so it's dark down in the ocean, isn't it? Yes. At a certain point. Yeah. What's the solution to that? Big Talk, bulbs. Big, big lights. Making your own. Making your own lights. Bioluminescence. Oh uh, yeah. Anglerfish. Anglerfish. Yeah. Anglerfish. So, so a whole bunch of them. Sorry. The one in Finding Nemo is terrifying. Sorry. Yeah, gave me nightmares. <laughs> I like how Corey stopped explaining because he <laughs> thought you, like you had a, a, a point. <laughs> I thought you had something profound. Would you like to make a point? Nemo the one in Finding Nemo gave me nightmares. I'm glad I cut you off. <laughs> uh, yeah, so those do exist. Uh, there's also viper fish, um, oh, flashlight fish. Yeah, a bunch of different kinds of fish that just make lights. And actually, pretty much every single animal, I think all animals that we know that produce light, use the same kind of chemical. It's called luciferin. Isn't it, uh, isn't a, it a separate organism that creates the light often? Yeah. I thought. Yeah, it's like, yeah. A, it's like a symbiotic relationship. Except Usually, yeah. It lives inside them or on them. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. But it, they all use the same chemical. 
more or less. It's just slightly different. So it's named based on the organism that it's in. Yeah. And that's from bacteria to fireflies to anglerfish at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, really? Even mm. ones above the ocean use this, do the same thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fireflies <sighs> use the same one. Luciferin and luciferase. Wow. Lucifer. Lucifer. Satan is lighting up the bottom of the ocean. Devil's chemical. Yes, sure. I'll let you. Know, I'll let you have that one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So they use the light for a bunch of different reasons, either to see things or to attract prey. Like in the mm-hmm. case of the anglerfish, um, I think some even for mating, but that's probably less common. Um, and so that, you could say that they're flashing. <laughs> if you use flashing to get women interested in you, Luke, you should be in jail. <laughs> Why have you had a for women, scandal sorry. yet? <laughs> the deepest we've found a fish was about 8,000 meters, 8,178. Oh, so there wasn't any when they got to the bottom of the, of the ocean? Uh, no, that we, they didn't see any, they didn't see any uh, fish not that right. at seen. the bottom of there. Uh, that's the snailfish. Uh, we filmed that in 2017, like I said, 8,000 meters the uh, below you know, the surface of the ocean. Pretty resilient. Yeah, really resilient. That's a long way. Um, and there's a few others n- like around that kind of level. A few other fish, mm-hmm. lots of them are snailfish. Uh, we didn't really think that any of them existed down there um, up until they were found, essentially, uh, because we thought that life couldn't exist below a certain, for a certain, uh, below a certain level. It's mm. almost like we're constantly wrong about everything. <laughs> I mean, that, again, that's what science is. It's being wrong until you find out that you're you were wrong, <laughs> and then being wrong again, but slightly less so. Perpetually wrong forever. <laughs> Paul Yancey, who is a marine biologist basically has estimated that we can't have fish any deeper than about 8,300 meters. I bet he's wrong. Probably. Well, this is this is because <laughs> this is because uh, proteins don't build properly below that level. I still so he's probably I wrong. S- he's probably I wrong. But that's wrong. the that's There'll the thing. There'll be a fish that it. doesn't need proteins for uh, some reason. But deep sea fish have this really cool <laughs> way of uh, stopping themselves from just collapsing under pressure. They produce this uh, molecule called trimethylamine oxide or TMAO. And that's what makes fish smell. But they've got it in such a quantity that it makes them jelly-like so that they're not really crushed by like pressure. Like the moon bears. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. kind of like the moon bears. Yeah. Like it's grapes. almost like a, like they if they're like jelly-like, then that's like a suspension system, I guess. Mm. Yeah, like exactly. It, it, it stops the pressure reaching their organs. So, and it, it kind of, well, it does that. And it also, it, it helps uh, proteins work at higher pressures. Mm. So mm. in the same way that um, tardigrades have got a protein in them, that helps other proteins work in different conditions. These fish have got a similar protein that helps their proteins work at really, really high pressures. Ingenious. Yeah. That's clever. But uh, if you go any deeper than about 8,300, 8,400 meters, uh, apparently the pressure would be so great that water would just flow through their bo- flow through their bodies and kill them. What? Yeah. Why would it flow through their bodies? They it's... wouldn't be able to necessarily hold it out. The pressure is so big, it'll just kind of... Oh. It oh. rushes. Go right through. Because there's a, there's a, so there's a point if you're diving down and it's a a submersible or something, that if you were to break a window, air wouldn't rush out, water would rush in. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean by that? There's a subtle difference between like the air, like the air pushing out. The bubbles pushing out and the surface. The air pushing out. As opposed to the water. As opposed to the water rushing in. Because the, okay. Yeah, so implosions are what happen at the bottom of the I thought you meant if you smashed a window in the side of your (laughs) submersible. (laughs) Yeah. Water would, would rush, rush in. in. What I mean is, goodness <laughs> me, what? <laughs> what I'm meaning Only is, the facts here on side, guys. <laughs> the water would be the, the water would be breaking the windows inwards, right? Rather than yeah. the air pushing and breaking it outwards. Yes. Yeah, and if you put something at the bottom of the ocean, it's going to implode, which essentially yes. just means the pressure crushes it in and then it breaks apart. But that's more or less us. Uh, just to end on it, Vis- as Vescovo has said, if you remember, the guy that the made su- this the super villain. Yeah, the super. No, that was Elon no, Musk. No, no. No, no, no. The second guy, the guy that went to the bottom of the ocean, the, f- uh, the fourth person to go to the bottom of the ocean, he's effectively said that now humanity can get anywhere in the bottom of the ocean because he's got this vehicle that can go down and back up. And recycle itself. Exactly. So um, it's only a matter of time before we've explored... The ocean is our 100% of the ocean It's only a matter floor. of time before we've before explored we the other 97% of the ocean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Uh, and I, you know what? Uh, this has been a it's been a bit of an episode. I want to end on something quite fun, which is I when I when I googled the Mariana Trench, I found I found some uh, reviews of the Mariana Trench. Of the Mariana Trench. Trench. Was the, it by Fish? The James Cameron Lee one. <laughs> Unfortunately, not. I was really uh, hoping one of these. Uh, James. Of the, 
One of them says, uh, poor cell service and rude locals almost got blown <laughs> up by an underwater volcano. <laughs> uh, another says, would have given five stars, but the lighting was a bit too dim for my taste. <laughs> and uh, the last one says, there was a lot of work and pressure, but I made it safe and sound. The fish and chips were great. Uh, but the chips were a bit <laughs> soggy. The neighbors were a bit cagey, though. <laughs> bit cagey? A bit cagey. I don't know what that means. But the fish and chips were soggy. Awful. This is because Google allows you to review any place that yes. it is a place. Yes. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Uh, but that's the show, guys. Woo! Hey, Woo! Well done. we got yeah. there. I'm glad we know about the oceans now. Anything Anything you want to add? I feel thoroughly enlightened about the ocean. Unlike the ocean, which is very well, dark. Well, at least 3% of it. I suppose the only thing I'd like to add is that because we can now get just because we can now get to the deepest parts of the ocean doesn't mean that that's going to allow us to necessarily it's not going to increase that three percent number because part of the reason why we haven't explored so much of the ocean is because the ocean can't be mapped from space so you have to go down yes, there it can. oh can it it has been yeah oh we've mapped parts so why of it haven't we space. done more really? then we've mapped parts of it but we can't there's only we can only do so much kind of general mapping that's what i mean that's what i mean in order to map it like you can go you can look at mars and map it perfectly with telescopes but in order to, for us to actually explore the bottom of the ocean we have to go to the bottom of the ocean in either a vehicle or with a robot or something like that and so although we can get to the bottom of the ocean yes we now will have to go to all of the ocean at the bottom of the ocean but we did it with the ocean ocean mm. the top of the ocean and there's less ocean at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's also a lot deeper. That's true. So, That's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay. No excuse. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, well, then my point's invalid. That's not invalid. End the show. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be back next week. <laughs> Thanks for listening. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday. And why not leave us a nice wee review? You can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Or send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCore everywhere. You can follow me at Champkin everywhere. You can follow me at LukeCutforth in most places. Most places. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.